So a huge victory for Liverpool here at Anfield. They've beaten Manchester City by three goals to one. Stephen Kelly was alongside me. We're bitterly cold, so we'll keep this short. Have you just seen the champions? I think so. There was a point in the game when they were training up and you just thought they looked so comfortable. City did start really well and they, they were causing Liverpool problems. And Liverpool, I think, looked a little bit shaky at the back. But then... As soon as they scored, they settled into the game and they just showed that football that they're that they're capable of doing. They they swept him aside with some sweeping moves, got forwards with such pace. Their fullbacks instrumental again as always, and it was just it's a side that you think are they look like a Premier League winning team. The fullbacks, like the fullbacks of Liverpool right now, are as good as anywhere in the world. And there's really been a transformation probably over the last year of Liverpool. The front three were always so important and still are. But right now, their two most important players in terms of the way they want to play are probably Alexander-Arnold and Robertson. Yeah, I, that, that second goal will point out to you just how instrumental they are and how good they are. The way Alexander-Arnold has hit that crossfield ball to Robertson and the way Robertson has taken it in his stride and whipped it into Salah, who, don't get me wrong, Salah's going to get a lot of plaudits for it, but the way they, they set the goal up was just exceptional. Their technical ability, their energy levels, their determination, the all-round game for both of them is just beyond anybody else in this league. And the difference between their full-backs and City's full-backs, who, to be fair, Walker got into some good positions, but when he got there, you just didn't feel he was going to deliver the way Alexander Allen does. And then on the other side, some good crossing, but not not what you expect. And he did set up a goal, but Liverpool's fullbacks were just out of this world. Liverpool's fixture list for the next month or so is pretty favourable. None of the big six teams, Manchester City, take on Chelsea, Manchester United, and Arsenal in that stretch. So we're probably entering a different phase of the title race in terms of Liverpool are going to play games they have been winning will be expected to win that it's now going to become a more mental thing the 30 years without a title all the pressure that comes with that and playing with this club do you think that's actually going to be a factor I don't, I don't think so I, what, you, what you see with this Liverpool team is you, you don't feel like there's a banana skin in their fixtures you don't feel like they're going to throw a game away even if they're down in a the game they've got enough about them to come back which they've done so many occasions throughout the season when they're not playing well and they're under the cush they somehow turn it around and get a win they, they've they got a very strong mentality and Klopp has turned them into this team of winners and that's what they want to do, they never give up a game and when you're looking at them out there like I said, they two shots on target and they were 2-0 up it was, it was exceptional play for them and they just look like a side that, that can go on and win it 46 games unbeaten now for Liverpool here at Anfield, third defeat of the season already for Manchester City, 9 points behind Liverpool, what's gone wrong this season? Defensively, you just think defensively. Like Edison was a big blow today, and you know he offers them a lot more confidence. And when he's in that back five, so to speak, they're a much better outfit. But they just don't look like the team that have got enough about them. I mean, you're moving out someone like Fernandinho out of midfield, who has been instrumental in the way they play. You know, people talk about his tactical fouling and his positional sense and how he, he, he can cause teams problems. Like, that's that first goal today, Fabinho, we discussed that. I don't think that would have happened if Fernandinho's playing in midfield. He's playing centre-back, and he's the best centre-back on the pitch for City today. But... He, he's been lost that role and Rodri is an excellent footballer but he's a different role slightly to what Fernandinho does and I think that's what they're lacking so not having a centre back that they can rely on and having to put him there they're losing his abilities in midfield and that's changed The other talking point from that first goal and probably coming out of today was VAR yet again and the handball and the definition of handball and Pep Guardiola understandably infuriated in the build up to the first goal but particularly another handball later on in the game both from Trent Alexander-Arnold was the first one should that have been a free kick? Should that have been a penalty? Should yeah. either have been a free kick? Yeah, see, penalty? Th- 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 so for the first one, both himself and Silva, hands touch the ball, but and they both seem in a natural position, so who do you give the handball to? So it, it's a hard one. And then they go the other, the other end and score. The second one is more of an, a, an argument point because... I don't think his hand's in a natural position, but his hand is outstretched and the ball does strike him and he stops the cross. So we've seen VAR give them quite consistently throughout the season and it's not something that's really been brought back so you know the levels of consistency throughout have just changed they don't seem to make the right decisions and Guardiola is rightfully frustrated with it because he's seen them given before up to this point alright great stuff Stephen great. enjoy Cheers. the game yeah absolutely loved it yeah, great stuff alright more to come